Hello, Alex. Hi, Dr. Scalpel. Hi, Thumbs. Hi there. You know, you've made a lot of progress recently. Yep, I feel like I've learned a lot about surgery, the team, instruments, incisions, all that stuff. It's been great. Great. Do you think you're ready for the next step? Um, I think so. Okay, then. It's time to talk about something that can be scary even for experienced surgeons. The leading. Oh, I don't really like the sight of blood. This doesn't sound like fun. If you're going to do surgery, you'll need to get used to the blood, Alex. Every time we make an incision, there's bleeding from little capillary blood vessels that are everywhere. Blood keeps us alive, but during surgery, it can keep welling up and get in the way. And if you can't see what you're doing, you can't do what you're doing. How do we stop the bleeding then? We use special surgical tools. Today we'll look at three ways to deal with bleeding. Cautery, suction, and sponges. Let's start with cautery, otherwise known as the bovie or the fire stick. Think of the cautery just like a scalpel, except A, it's electric, B, it's not so sharp, and C, it burns too. You'll need to hook the patient up to the cautery machine to make it work. Hook the patient up? Yeah, we're forming a circuit between the patient and the cautery machine so that when you press the button, the juice flows through the tip. You can tell the cautery is working because it makes the tissues crackle, and there is usually a little smoke too. Normally, the cautery tool has two buttons, yellow and blue. One of these coagulates tissue and the other one cuts. We can use the coagulate button to seal off pesky little blood vessels in our incision. We usually grab them with a forcep and then apply the cautery to the forcep to cook them good. It doesn't matter where on the instrument you put the cautery, the current shoots right down to the tip. So just touch it on the top of the forcep. If you get tired using the scalpel, you can use cut button on the cautery to do the same job. And if you get a little bleeding, you can zap it right away with the coagulate button. It seems much easier to use the cautery. Why bother with the scalpel? Why bother? Because the scalpels are the lightsabers of surgeons. As well as that, there are times when we will want to use a scalpel because it's more precise than cautery and it cuts tissue cleanly instead of burning. It's also a little slower and a little less fun than using the fire stick. Bear in mind that the cautery makes tissue heat up. So if you keep your finger too close for too long, you're going to get a little hot in the finger department. Cautery also generates smoke, so a lot of ORs now use smoke evacuators too. Remember, cautery isn't all fun and game. It's electricity, so it can be a problem with some types of pacemakers and other electrical doohickeys. Also, watch out for sparks. If there's any alcohol in the operative field, it'll catch on fire. That's why we don't use alcohol in our preps anymore. Also, only turn the current on when you need it. If you press the button too long and too often, you risk keeping the circuit open and injuring the patient with stray current. If you have a hole in your glove, cautery will find it. It's sneaky that way. Cautery can be a fun tool, but just like a scalpel, you gotta respect it. It's good for little blood vessels, but it doesn't work on the bigger ones. Okay, cautery. Neato. How else can we deal with bleeding? Okay, let's talk suction. Normally, we like to stop bleeding as soon as we see it. But sometimes, you get to the point where everything you do makes something bleed. In this case, you just gotta keep on going. Complete the stage of the surgery as quick as you can, and then find a safe place to stop and get the bleeding under control properly. Suction helps you do this. It's used to remove blood from the operative field so we can see to keep on operating. There are two main ways of using the sucker. The first is for sucking up blood that's in one particular place. For this application, you'll use a sucker with a tip on the end, like a yonker or a tonsil tip. These only suck at the end of the instrument, so you have to touch them right where the blood is. There's an earth to sucking, and it takes a while to get good at it. If you leave the sucker in the operative field all the time, it gets in the way. Worse if the sucker is moving around all the time. 
It's very distracting, and it can bump into the other instruments. So, you have to get your timing right. The surgeon operates a bit, and whenever there's a pause in the action, you jump in for a few seconds and get busy sucking up the blood you can see. Then you get out of the field so the surgeon can operate again. If the bleeding is bad, you might be doing this several times a minute. Suck and operate, suck and operate. You go back and forth like this for a while until the steps of the surgery is complete. The other way to use a sucker is to remove a large amount of fluid from a space quickly. For this, you need a different design of sucker. This one is a pool sucker, or an abdominal sucker. This is like a regular sucker, with a guard on the outside with a bunch of holes in it. It applies suction to all the holes at once, so you can suck from a large area instead of just one place. Is that all the suckers are used for? Nope. Once you get good at using the sucker, you'll discover there are some other things you can do with it. These include smoke evacuation, retraction, and directing operations when you're assisting. But let's stick to the basics for now. The last technique for controlling bleeding that we're going to cover today is sponges. These are pretty simple, but they're really useful. You'll also hear them being called swabs or packs. They're made of soft, white, absorbent gauze and we'll use them to apply pressure to temporarily stop bleeding in the operative field. This buys us time to get in control of things. For example, at a trauma laparotomy, we often fill the entire abdomen up with sponges at first to control the bleeding, and then take the sponges out carefully one at a time until we can see where the bleeding is. Sometimes, if the bleeding is very bad, we'll control it by putting in a bunch of sponges and come back later to take them out when the patient is more stable. You can also use sponges to protect your incision when you put a retractor in, or to hold an organ in a certain place when you operate on it, like when you put a sponge over the liver at a gallbladder operation. Very interesting. So, that's three ways of dealing with your basic minor bleeding. Okay, Alex, tell us what you learned today. Um, okay. Let me check my notes. Number one, to control bleeding in the operative field, we use cautery, suction, and sponges. Number two, cautery is for cutting and burning. Blue button burns, yellow button cuts. Number three, with cautery, beware of heat, alcohol, and open circuit. Number four, suction is important. You can suck in just one place or use a pool sucker to remove a lot of fluid quickly. Number five, use sponges to apply pressure to stop bleeding and buy time. That's great, Alex. I was worried you would have trouble with bleeding, but I think you're getting it. 